Welcome to the Cicada Barbecue Day. I think Cicada gatherings are a great opportunity to meet other people with implants and um, just ask lots of questions. Uh, the cochlear implant is pretty widespread all over the world now, but there's still a lot of people don't know much about it. Uh, Cicada's mission is to keep informing people about cochlear implants and to help recipients make the most of their hearing. Um, also to help with equipment and other, like we can sort of help with advice on some other technology just that helps you connect better. So it can be a difficult journey. Um, we all understand that, people with implants. Um, and sometimes you just need a bit of support. Um, that support can go a long way. The criteria for cochlear implants has expanded over time and now it's becoming more common for clients with single-sided deafness to have a cochlear implant as well. It's been quite interesting to observe this um, because sometimes people who are single-sided deaf actually have more trouble switching on to the sound from a cochlear implant because the brain sometimes is a bit stubborn and it just wants to stick with what it knows. And auditory training has been found to really help those people even more. I'd like to introduce the Medel team. So Medel is an implant company from Austria and, and some of you might not have even heard of Medel. <laughs> um, because I guess, you know, cochlear tends to be the big focus in Australia, but Medel has been in Australia for about 15 years or more. And so it's another choice for people with cochlear implants. And um, I'd like to introduce Robin Shakes, who is the Australasian manager for Medel. And um, so she's going to tell you a little bit about Medel. And then Robin will introduce our guest speaker, Rebecca. So thank you all for coming today and welcome, Robin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Sue. And thank to everyone for coming on this beautiful day. I think we're going to have a, a, a lovely talk. And a, I wanted to talk just a little bit about Medel uh, because we've been getting a few inquiries. Who, who are we? So um, Medel is a cochlear implant company that started in Austria. Um, and just like the Australian product started at the Melbourne University, our device started at the University of Vienna. We're a family-owned company, so the people who invented and developed our first implant still own the company. So that's quite an interesting difference. We don't have any shareholders or stock market to worry about. We're a very family-focused um, company you know, with a family attitude to the recipients. Having said that, we do have 3,000 employees throughout the world and offices um, in Australia. We have an office in Sydney and we have an office in Perth. And we have Medell staff based in Melbourne, um, in New Zealand, um, Brisbane. Um, so, so, so we've been here for a while and we've, we've got quite uh, good staff. Today with us we have um, Diana and Andre who principally look after uh, New South Wales supporting the clinics that are giving the cochlear implants and the other hearing implants that we sell as well because we sell middle ear implants and bone conduction implants that you might have heard about. Um, we're very interested in ears and hearing and balance and all of the things that affect uh, people with, with hearing loss. Um, Medell actually stands, stands for Medical Electronics, which is a bit of a, a mouthful. So Medell it is, and I know we've got Medell recipients in the audience today, and hopefully people with all brands of implants um, are going to look at the live streaming. The implant journey is a wonderful one, and certainly a miracle in my lifetime, so you can tell from my age that I've been involved with implants for a while and before that with hearing aids when hearing aids were all that were available and it's been an absolute absolute joy for me to see people going from not being able to hear to hear with this technology which continues to improve and the lovely thing is that when you have an implant 
the externals keep getting smarter and smarter and with your old implant you're still able to benefit from the newest technology. So, you know, it's a journey that keeps improving for you. I started my uh, journey, I guess, with hearing loss with my own family because my, my grandmother went profoundly deaf um, in her early 30s. So as a child, I was always used to accommodating that without thinking. Um, I remember when I was interviewed to get onto the audiology course, <coughs> people thought I had a surprisingly good knowledge of how to communicate, but it had always been the situation in, in my, my family because my grandmother and her sisters all lost their hearing uh, very, very young. My mother wore hearing aids and my sister who passed away very early, um, she also had a, a developing hearing loss but she had cancer so maybe, maybe it had something to do with her treatment. Um, but it's an area that I've always been passionate about and when I started as an audiologist, we, we didn't have cochlear implants. So rehabilitation was super important then, making the most out of the tiny bit of hearing some people had. I've seen developments with children who in the early days just struggled so hard to learn how to speak and hear with the tiny bit of hearing. And, and pioneers like Bill Gibson, who's with us, really help change that for the children. So most children, if their parents choose for them to hear, will get their implants very young and they'll go to school with their brothers and sisters and in the local community. And with the older adults, with, um, as Sue was saying, the criteria's changed. So we've got younger and younger adults getting cochlear implants and being able to continue in the jobs they want to do or their studies and we're all going to lose our hearing as we get older, there's no doubt about that. And it's nice to see that there are options. So some of you people have had your implants for a long time and you were very brave when you made the choice. And I think you've forged the way for others by showing what improvements that can do. The last thing I'm gonna talk about, so I don't hog the stage, is there are three aspects though. The surgeon is super important. He does an amazing job helping get that implant in for you. Your audiologist you'll see a lot of because they'll program and help you over the years. But rehabilitation is also super important and sometimes it doesn't get enough attention. Children get rehabilitation, not always as much as they need, but adults quite often miss out due to lack of funding or lack of resources. We are very lucky at Medill to have an amazing rehab team. It's based in Innsbruck, so we're up in the Alps if you've ever travelled to, to Europe. And we have a big rehabilitation team. Um, many of them speech pathologists, teachers of the deaf. And I'm pleased to say we've had a lot of Australians go and live in Innsbruck and, and add to our amazing resources. Um, Rebecca actually worked at the um, Sydney Cochlear <coughs> Implant Centre as it was in, in the old days. So she's, she's got an amazing um, practical background um, and an affiliation with this, this program. Um, she lives in Brisbane now where she's worked with um, implant programs there. But she works for Medill, um, based from Brisbane, looking after Japan and a lot of the Asian countries helping um, improve the rehabilitation that we can offer there. So as a company we have a big commitment to rehab and I'm pleased to introduce Rebecca Claridge who'll tell you her part in that and how she can help you. Thanks Robin and thanks Sue for the introduction. Uh, I'm delighted to be back here at the Sydney Cochlear Implant Centre. Uh, it's been a real joy for me in preparing to um, bring you this presentation today to make connections with the people that I worked with uh, such a long time ago, like Sue. Uh, Sue, I'm not calling you old. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, admiring your longevity. Uh, and also, uh, you know, SEIC is a really great organisation to have such, um, such loyalty to uh, and, and achieve such great longevity in their staff. 
Um, I was talking to Sue, I was reminiscing about time uh, that I worked here and not only did I work here but I lived here uh, too, um, not here on this facility because some of you might remember that this used to be a residential psychiatric institution <laughs> so I didn't live here, I lived in Gladesville just down the road and in fact uh, one day I was at work and a photographer had come to take some pictures for a catalogue, uh, for, a, for a brochure. And he, he wanted a few more children, and there wasn't enough children here, so my children being just down the road, well, they got roped into the, the, the flyer um, photographic shoot. Uh, and I was reminiscing about this with Sue, and Sue found the photo for me. So here it is. Ta-da, there are my two children. Uh, we think this is probably circa 2001. So um, I thought it would be fun for you to see how these very pixelated children turned out 17 years later, so uh, here they are. So didn't they turn out well and haven't our digital cameras improved a lot in 17 years? So back to our topic. Um, you know, over my career, most of it has been working with children who have received cochlear implants and their families. But over the years, I did have seen, uh, I have seen a number of adults who were interested in actively pursuing rehabilitation to improve their outcomes with their cochlear implants. And I found that work very interesting. So I guess in recent times, my interest in this topic of rehabilitation for adults using cochlear implants has really grown. Um, in fact, around the world, because uh, as Robin said, I do work, uh, it's a global position, around the world there has been a significant rise in interest in rehabilitation for adults who use cochlear implants. And this is because research is showing us that structured rehabilitation programs can facilitate better outcomes for adults who use hearing technology. So today we're going to talk about what are the four aspects of rehabilitation, what resources we have at Medell uh, and that you can access uh, that can help you develop your listening skills. And I'm hoping that some of you would like to challenge yourself with some interactive listening practice opportunities. Oh, I'm seeing some nods, that's good. All right, so to start with, I want to talk about how there are varying outcomes with cochlear implants. So this is with any brand of cochlear implant. We do see a big variety in the outcomes. Maybe you have achieved the enviable gold standard, which is the ability to converse <laughs> easily in all situations and on the telephone. Maybe. Uh, you've experienced an increased ability to understand speech in quiet situations. Maybe your implant provides you with an increase in awareness about environmental sounds and that makes you feel safer. Very rarely, with all brands, there are some people who do not experience a change with their implant and certainly we investigate that a bit further. But the goal of rehabilitation is to manage expectations and also facilitate the best possible outcome. So what we're talking about is an outcome further up this ladder. And through the process of rehabilitation, we identify success through improvements in listening and communication ability, lifestyle improvements such as an increase in your activity level and your participation in things, and all of these things flow on to improvements in your quality of life. Before you received your cochlear implant, you would have received some information about the factors that affect outcomes once, when you begin to use your cochlear implant. And this would have helped you make your decision to go ahead with the surgery. And it would have also helped you set realistic expectations. These factors listed here, they're what we call intrinsic factors. So these are factors within you. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of these today, so I'm just going to give you a moment to read this list.
So all of these factors influence how a person will progress with their cochlear implant. In the red down here, it says cognitive decline. This is about our thinking skills, our ability to think clearly. Uh, so all of these other intrinsic factors, they are not malleable. They don't change. You get what you get, so to speak. But cognitive decline, well, this is a different story. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that story in a couple of slides. So this slide here covers the extrinsic factors. So these are factors outside your person and these factors can be varied. This variability contributes significantly to an individual's rate of progress and their outcome. I'm very optimistic about this group I see in front of me because if I think about the extrinsic factors, well, firstly, you are all wearing your hearing technology, so you are compliant with your device. Then, when I mentioned about listening opportunities, we're going to practice those today, you all looked very motivated. You were motivated and you were excited about practice opportunities. You are all taking advantage of support services. You are here today at Cicada, which is a fantastic support service and also a social opportunity. So all of this tells me that these extrinsic factors for you are very optimistic. So back to that story that I promised you about cognitive decline. So cognitive decline is the process by which our thinking skills get less clear. What this diagram shows, so this diagram was published in The Lancet, which is a medical journal in 2017. What this diagram shows is the population of people who are diagnosed with dementia near the end of their life, sort of later in life. So all of this is the population with dementia. What this diagram shows is that 35% of this population with dementia it was preventable. 35% is preventable. Up here is hearing loss. What this shows is that hearing loss has been identified as one of the nine preventable risk factors for dementia. In fact, of this population with dementia, 9% of them have hearing loss identified as a significant cause of their hearing loss. So that's not good, but the good news for all of you is that you have taken measures to avoid that preventable link between hearing loss and dementia by using your hearing technology. There's more good news too, because if you happen to know, if you have a friend or a relative who has untreated hearing loss and you're worried about them now because you know this link between dementia and hearing loss, what we know from research is that if the hearing loss is treated with a cochlear implant, about a third of those people with early signs of dementia, well, that can be reversed. It can be reversed with a cochlear implant. Maybe you are curious, why is there a link between hearing loss and dementia? It's a very interesting topic. Well, Firstly, there is a common link between hearing loss and age. Hearing loss, hearing loss and age, that's, uh, that's one thing, and also uh, dementia and age. So there is a common link. Aging is the common link between both of them. Sigh. The second thing is social isolation. So we know that uh, having a hearing loss creates factors that are socially isolating for people, and this can lead to depression. The third and very interesting fact is, we have now know from research that the brain begins to change when it does not hear speech clearly. So I want to show you this slide from a researcher, Anu Sharma, who is at the University of Colorado. She does a lot of research about how the brain changes in response to hearing loss. This uh, study was published in 2013. What it shows on the left 
is the brain of a person with normal hearing listening to speech. So this person, the activity in the brain when they are listening to speech is happening in what we call the auditory cortex, the area of the brain that is designated to listen and process information through listening. It's doing its job. Here on the right, this picture is showing the pers a person with a hearing loss. Actually, it's only a mild to moderate hearing loss. It's not even a very severe hearing loss. When this person listens to speech, what happens? The activity in the brain mm. is much more forward. It's in the frontal cortex or the prefrontal cortex. What this tells us is that it requires a lot more effort for this person to listen to and understand speech. I think you all know that. But what is happening in the auditory cortex, the area of the brain that is supposed to be doing the processing through listening? That's here. Well, it's doing nothing, really. So Anu Sharma, the researcher, she wanted to find out what is happening in that auditory cortex. So the, uh, the next study after this one, I haven't got a slide from that, shows that when this person with the hearing loss is stimulated with a visual stimulus, they're shown something, the auditory area of the brain lights up. When this person with the hearing loss is stimulated with a touch, the auditory area of the brain lights up. What this tells us is that the brain is behaving in a way that it was not designed to do. And this requires a lot more effort. And what it means is less of the brain, the grey matter, is available to do all of that everyday thinking. So before you start panicking, yes, this can be reversed with hearing technology. And we can make this reversal happen quicker with auditory training. I just want to remind you that you are not alone with hearing loss. So these are statistics from Australia. If you can't read them at the back, the most important one is, look at this, in the over 70s bracket, 74% of people have a hearing loss. So I would encourage you to go out and share this information about the preventable link between dementia and hearing loss and also share that information about how the brain changes when it cannot hear clearly. All right, that's my, that's my <laughs> preachy moment. Uh, and now we're going to talk about rehabilitation. On to more practical matters. So when we're designing a rehabilitation program for adults, we like to consider these four aspects to create an individualized program. But, it all begins with the hearing technology. You have to get it, you have to have it programmed, and you have to wear it. How much do you have to wear it? 10 hours a day. So hearing technology is not like a pair of glasses that you can put on, read the menu, take off. Hearing technology is changing your brain. It is changing your brain for the better. So that's why you need to wear it more consistently. So I'm going to talk about these two aspects of rehabilitation today, auditory training and communication therapy. Research shows us that between 20 and 30 minutes a day of auditory training can maximise your progress with your hearing technology. Communication therapy involves raising awareness of behaviours and conditions that impact the effectiveness of communication. And we practice solutions that involve both the user of the hearing technology and their communication partners. So, auditory training. What is it? What can you do to improve your skills? So, when we're talking about auditory training, we um, sometimes use these two terms, passive and active. So passive are things like when you watch TV with or without captions, uh, maybe you listen to music, or um, just 
listening into conversation. So that's passive auditory training. But active auditory training is so much faster. What is it? Active auditory training is focused work. When you are working with a therapist or working with a communication partner, you can even do active auditory training on your own. So here's some tips before we get into some activities on auditory training. It's important to start with easier activities, easier tasks first. I know that sounds really obvious, doesn't it? But how many of us have decided to take on a new skill, oh, this is easy, and then jump further ahead only to fail? So start easy and gradually make things more challenging for yourself. Gradually make things more challenging for your brain. Uh, this is a very simple three-step method to auditory training. So the first step, listen first. So what this means is you are teaching your brain through listening. You listen to some words or some sentences or some sounds. Then you say them. That's your second step, say. So when you are saying them, you are also teaching your brain. You are teaching your brain through repetition provided by your own voice. Then you listen and choose. What that means is you're going to listen to somebody say that word, that sound, that sentence, and you're going to test your brain by selecting it, by either repeating it or finding it. So the three-step three method, listen, say, listen and choose. You uh, don't be frightened of adding visual input if that helps. So you're going to do listening first and then if you need it, you're going to add some visual input. This might be speech reading or looking at some written text or even following some gestures. Another tip is listening miles are important. So this just means get that technology on, do your 20 to 30 minutes auditory training a day. When we're talking about auditory training, we use two terms, two types of auditory training. Synthetic training. So synthetic training is a natural approach to learning how to understand language. Uh, so in this synthetic approach, uh, you use your knowledge of words, of vocabulary, of how they go together into a sentence. And this helps your brain predict what those words might be. Synthetic training can also incorporate cognitive challenge. So by this, I mean problem solving or puzzle solving, uh, working on improving speed of processing information, organising information, some memory activities. And by adding cognitive challenge into your synthetic auditory training program, you can reverse or you can uh, prevent that cognitive decline that I told you about is associated with hearing loss. Analytic training, this is when we focus on individual sounds. So the work is on improving your ability to discriminate vowel sounds and consonant sounds. So maybe your cochlear implant has given you uh, access to a whole pile of sounds that you haven't heard for many years you might need some practice listening to those new sounds. Now, I know this table looks very um, overwhelming. Don't panic, we're going to go through each of these points. What this table does is gives you um, an idea of how to make your auditory training easier or harder. Remember, it's recommended to start easier, but if you start somewhere that's too hard, you can use this table to help you work out how to make the tasks easier. So let's look at this first one. When we're talking about set size, so these are going to be the words or the sentences or the sounds that you are listening to. When we're talking about set size, it's easier to start with a small closed set. 
So a, a closed set are the words that you already know. You already know that the answer is going to be in this small set of words. An example of a small set of words might be um, fruit or summer fruit. Uh, so you know that the words are going to be in that group of vocabulary. It's harder if it's open set. You have no idea the topic, you have no idea the vocabulary. Presentation is about how those words and sentences are said. It's easier if you add in vision or lip reading. It's easier if the person speaks more slowly. Make it more challenging for yourself. Do it through listening only. Ask the speaker to speed up a little bit. If the sentence is shorter, it's easier. If the words are very different sounding from each other, it's easier. If the words sound similar, it's harder. So an example of that might be, if I was thinking of a closed set activity, I'm going to talk to you about suburbs in Sydney. If I wanted to make it easier, I will choose suburbs like Woolloomooloo and Ride. Very different sounding words. If I want to make it harder, if you want to make it harder for yourself, you find words that are similar sounding. For example, Bronte, Bondi. Sound much more similar. Uh, if, if we are talking about um, things that we can see, things that we can feel, this is concrete, it's easier. If we're talking about abstract thought or a puzzle, it's harder. If you know what you're talking about, what the speaker is talking about, it's easier. If I just surprise you and give you a topic that we've had no preparation, of course, it will be harder. Maybe you want to make it easy for yourself and practice in quiet. Maybe you want to make it more challenging and practice with background noise. Similar with distance. Close is easy, at distance is more challenging. So now you have this table, you can work out where your skills are and you can adjust it. You can make it a little bit easier if you need to or a little bit harder. So we're going to do some practice now. Are you ready? Some sign of enthusiasm. Here's a closed set example. So remember the three-step method, listen, say, listen and choose. So let's do that. We're going to start very easy and we're only going to use this very small closed set of colours from the rainbow. So we're only going to do these three words on the left. I'm going to start and say them, then you're going to say them, and then I'm going to say one and you're going to choose. And when we get to that bit, you're not going, uh, Polly's not going to type the answer for you. Okay, ready to listen. Red, orange, so I'll say all three first. Red, orange, indigo. Orange. 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 Great work. Good. And I, you did that through listening because I hid my mouth from you. Well done. Uh, if we were going to make this activity more challenging, then we would make a bigger set. Let's try it. So I'm going to say all of these. You're going to say them after me. Red, orange, indigo, yellow, green, blue, violet. Yellow. Yellow. Good. And I said that quickly. Well done. If we want to make that task more difficult, remember I said make the sentence longer. So here, the same closed set of words, colours from the rainbow, and we're going to put it at the end. So I'm going to say all of these and then you're going to say them. My car is red, 
My car is orange. My car is indigo. My car is yellow. My car is green. My car is blue. My car is violet. Now your turn. My car is red. Well done, good job. If we were going to make it even more challenging, then I would put the target word that you need to listen for in the middle. All right, we're just going to jump straight up to the listen and choose this time. You've heard all of these words before. I'm going to say one now. You tell me what I say. Wear your orange shirt. Oh, you guys are good. Okay, we're going to step it up a bit. I don't want to jump in too high because then you'll be all frightened and want to leave. So we're creeping up on the hard stuff. <laughs> so here we have a puzzle. This is a way that we're going to engage that cognitive challenge. I'm not going to say the colour of the rainbow. I'm going to give you a clue that will lead you to the answer, which is from that closed set of colours in the rainbow. If you want to make it easy for yourself, you can also look at the puzzle because there's some clues there in the length of the word and uh, when we start to fill it out, all right? If you want to make it more challenging, don't look at the screen. So I'll get you to, okay, good. So Polly's not going to be typing this one. So the first clue, a moon that saw you standing alone. What do you think? Anyone get the answer? Yeah? The answer is blue, good work. So the clue was, I'll get you to type it now. The clue was a moon that saw you standing alone. Okay, the second clue. A solar hue. Anyone get it? Yellow. Yellow, great, good. A solar hue, good. A citrus fruit, great. Neither blue nor violet. Yeah, indigo, terrific. Jealous eyes. Green, good. The most romantic rose. And the last clue, a flower of African variety. Wonderful, terrific. So you could do a jigsaw puzzle with your communication partner, just listening to the clues and challenging yourself. If you want a little help, then you look at the puzzle, get the clues from that. Uh, so now we're talking about open set listening. Remember, closed set is when you know that the answer is going to be from that small group of words. Open set, well, the topic could be anything. It's easier if the speaker is somebody you know, if you're used to hearing that voice. You might like to challenge yourself and do open set listening with, recorded, uh, with a recorded voice. Actually, it's possible to record your own voice and do open set auditory training that way. Maybe you uh, read a paragraph that you're interested in from an article or the newspaper and then you can go back later and you can listen to it. And what your brain does is the memory of the article helps you fill in any of the words that you can't pick out from the recording. So here's some ideas of things that you can use for open set auditory training. So you could use a list of words, some familiar sentences or questions, uh, paragraphs like I described, recording it yourself, 
or asking somebody to record it. Uh, you can watch YouTube with or without captions. Uh, having a look at some English as a second language resources online. The language there is very simple and the speakers speak very clearly. Uh, documentaries with or without captions and audiobooks. Most audiobook platforms allow you to adjust the speed. Remember, slower is always easier, well, nearly always easier. I want to talk a little bit about speech tracking because speech tracking is a simple listening activity <coughs> that two people can do together and it's suitable for all abilities. So the easiest way is this one here. When you follow along listening to and looking at the text together. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense because we're going to do this together. Uh, if you want to challenge yourself a bit more, you would follow along the text, listening to it, and then the speaker would stop and you take over reading. Now you can even do that uh, method of speech tracking if you want to improve your abilities using the telephone. So you could both have the same passage and over the phone one person reads a little bit of the passage, stops and the other person takes over the reading. The most uh, complex, the highest level way of doing speech tracking is when you do not see the text, you just listen to the text and you repeat back whatever you hear. All right, let's have a try at this. This is the first uh, and easiest way of doing speech tracking and you are simply going to listen as I read these words, you're going to follow along with the words, thinking about them as you see me point to them. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. Okay, well done. That was a bit passive, but what's happening is your brain begins to interpret those words and creates a memory, an auditory memory of those words. Let's have a look at the next way up. So here, I'm not going to point. I'm going to read, I'm going to stop, and you're going to take over reading when I stop. The rainbow is a division of Great work, so everybody knew that I had said the word of and then you continued reading, well done. So the next one, this is the highest level of speech tracking. You'll notice there's no sentence here and Polly's not going to type it for you so you have to do this through listening. You, no, you don't have to, you can try. Let's all try and do it through listening. So tracking is easier when you know the content, when you've got the topic, because your brain can begin to fill in any of the words that you don't hear clearly. So these three tracking sentences have come from a paragraph called the rainbow passage. You know, you can hear, they're all about a rainbow. To make it easier for your brain, I'm going to go back to this sentence. I'm going to read this sentence then I'm going to flick onto the next slide. You're going to listen to the sentence and tell me what you can hear. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colours. These take the shape of a long round arch. Sounds like you got all of those words, or many of them. Well done. These take the shape of a long, round arch. You know, it, what I just did then was help your brain consolidate that auditory memory of those words by repeating them back for you. All right, we're going to move into analytic auditory training now. So remember I talked about analytic auditory training being practice discriminating between sounds, particular sounds. 
The first level of analytic auditory training is about detecting sounds. So detecting is simply, yes, I can hear a sound. Is there a sound? And when there is no sound, can you count the number of sounds? Can you tell the difference between a short sound and a long sound? Now this last one is interesting. Can you detect and identify the Ling sounds? The Ling sounds is named for Daniel Ling. So Daniel Ling was uh, an audiologist and teacher of the deaf who um, was very, very influential in the 1970s. So remember at this point, cochlear implants were not available. Daniel Ling devised this test uh, so that he could uh, establish what children could hear with their hearing aids, whether he could teach them that particular sound through listening, or whether he would have to use tactile or other methods to teach that sound. Now, we still use the Ling test today, but we use it for a very different reason. We use the Ling test to make sure your hearing technology is working and that it's doing its job, that it's programmed well, and that you can hear all of the sounds you need to, to understand speech. So what Daniel Ling did is he, he established the, this set of six sounds that helps us work out that you can hear the low frequency sounds and the high frequency sounds, the soft sounds and the loud sounds. And these are the Ling sounds. I'm going to say them. U, M, A, E, Sh, S. I'm going to get you to do uh, to you for you to say them now too. Ready? Great job. I'm going to say one. You tell me what it is. E. e. Great work. Good. Let's do all of the Ling sound test. Let. I'm going to say all of them. Ah, uh, Good work. I think that was all of them. Um, so if you had trouble with any of those sounds, I'd encourage you to speak to your audiologist. Maybe there's some adjustments in the map that are required. I'd encourage you to do this test with some regularity at home to make sure that your technology is working well and that it's programmed to your needs. Uh, these, these six sounds were um, devised in um, North America. Uh, in Australia, we sometimes use a seventh sound and it's or. The reason for that is that in Australian English, well, some of the frequencies in our oo and m are quite similar. But we find that if we add or in there, uh, we can get enough information to make sure that the device is programmed correctly. So a little bit more about analytic auditory training. So after this level of detecting sound and you were able to identify the Ling sounds by repeating them back, after this level we look at listening for syllables. So at the easiest we would choose very contrasting words. So listening for words that have got four syllables versus one syllable. Like the example I gave before about Woolamaloo versus ride. Uh, then we would build up all the way to words that sound quite similar, like those suburbs Bondi and Bronte. Maybe you have not heard some of those high frequency sounds like sh and s for a very long time. Maybe your brain needs a bit more practice listening for those sounds. So we might do an activity where you just listen for a specific sound. Let's do one of those now. So um, I'm going to say five words. I want you to listen to all five. And Polly, I'll get you to have a rest for this one. So I will say five words. I want you to listen to all five. Then I will say them again. 
raise your hand if you hear shh. Actually, we'll get you to type this bit. Um, I said raise your hand, but if you don't feel like raising your hand, you could just raise a finger. Uh, this is not a competition. This is about your opportunity to improve your skills. So uh, back to the instructions, I will say the five words now. Listen. Tissue. Match. Wish. Share. Half. So now I'm going to say them again. This is your chance to listen and test yourself. Put your finger up or raise your hand if you're feeling confident and bold. All right, let's go ahead. Tissue. So the word was tissue. Great. Match. The word was match. That was a tricky one, wasn't it? Because there's a lot of the frequencies in sh are the same as in ch. Number three. Wish. The word was wish. Wish, great, good. Number four. Share. The word was share. Great. Number five, half. The word was half. So I did put some tricky ones in there deliberately so that you can see how those sounds are similar and you can improve your um, perception of those sounds with auditory training, with auditory practice. Let's look at some consonants now. So I have not got the text on these slides so that you can challenge yourself through listening. You can probably guess these words though. They are cat, mat, rat. Cat, mat, rat. So uh, you've had a listen. Uh, now I'm going to test you and I'm going to say one of them. Rat. It was rat. Well done. Oops. I did. I said rat. Now, those rhyming words were, had good, clear auditory contrasts. These rhyming words have more difficult auditory contrasts. I'm going to say them for you. Hat, sat, fat. Did you get those words? They were hat, sat, fat. Now I'm going to say one, fat. Great work, terrific. Okay, how about listening for some vowel sounds? So here I'm going to say two words and then I'm going to say one of those words again here. You tell me which one I said. Bait, boat, 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 great. Cat, coat, cat. <laughs> Terrific, well done. Shake, shook, shake. Excellent. Last one. Hit, hat, hit. Yes. Well done. It seemed like from your answers you found the vowel discrimination easier than the consonants. What do you think? Yeah, great, good. Okay, the good news is that your intense auditory training, your active auditory training has finished for today and now you can be passive in your auditory training and listen while I talk about communication therapy. So communication therapy is about, um, we think about strategies to improve the listening environment 
strategies for the cochlear implant user to do, and strategies for your communication partner to do. The first topic I wanted to talk about is improving your <coughs> listening environment. So strategies that we can do to improve our listening environment. Firstly, to be aware or beware of noise in your environment. We are very lucky in this room to have such a perfect acoustic environment. But I know all of you know and experience the challenge of listening in a noisy environment. So be proactive in that. Make some changes that help you uh, to minimise the noise in the background. Maybe look for where the air conditioning unit is. Move away from it. Look to if there's an uh, open window next to a noisy road. Close it. Strategies to improve your listening environment. Find the light. Find the light. Get your, the person that you are speaking to to stand with the light on their face. That makes it easier for you to understand what they're talking about. The next one's a tricky one. Resist distraction. Listening requires concentration. So if you can see aspects of your environment that are likely to distract you, turn your back on them. Face away. You know, if a cafe or a restaurant has a booth, that's a really great way of minimising distraction. There's not a lot to look at in the booth. And usually, the acoustic environment is much better in a booth. And manage reverberation. So reverberation is echo. Reverberation, when we uh, measure reverberation, we talk about how long sound stays in a room. And a long reverberation rate makes it very difficult for you to understand speech. You can manage reverberation or echo by adding soft things to the environment. So in your own home, add in some cushions, add in some rugs, get some curtains. All of these things absorb noise and minimise reverberation. I want to show you an app that I like and uh, many, many people do like it. It's called Decibel 10. <laughs> Uh, so this code here is called a QR code and what you can do with your phone is you can open the camera and hold it up to this code and it will take you straight to this app if you want it. It's a free one, it's a free app. Uh, you can pay for it if you want to and you can have one that doesn't have ads on it but I haven't done that. I'm going to show you the one with ads on it. Decibel 10 is a way for you to measure the sound in your environment. Yeah, get your phone out now if you want to and just hold it up while I'm, I'm just going to unplug this and I'm going to show you the app. Sorry, it just did something I was not expecting. Okay, so this is the app. It's measuring the sound in this room. Now, you know, sometimes you're in a noisy environment. This allows you the opportunity of measuring that. You can make some changes to the environment, measure it again, see if your changes improved the background noise level in your environment. Maybe you're finding it very difficult to explain to people <coughs> what needs to happen so that you can hear clearly. You can show them this app. You know what, it's really noisy in here, see? It's 90 decibels of noise. That's too much for me to hear. What do you need to hear clearly? We know that you need my voice to be 15 to 25 decibels louder than the background noise. We know that's what you need to hear clearly. So, I'm not going to speak and we're going to look at what the background noise is in this room. So it looks like it's about 47 decibels. 
there's a bit of, yeah, there's air con and even tiny little noises. You think it's silent in this room, but it's not. But 47 decibels is actually pretty good. I have been in classrooms with children using hearing technology, cochlear implants, and the background noise has been 90 decibels. Now, it's not possible for me to speak at 90 plus 15 or plus 25. That's 105 decibels. It's not possible. Actually, mostly conversational speech is around 65 decibels. So with an, a background noise level of 47, if I move away from the microphone, maybe you can still hear me clearly. It's gone. But when I move back to the microphone, of course the signal, my voice, becomes much clearer than the background noise. Decibel 10 is the name of the app. Okay, so that's improving your listening environment. What about strategies for you? What can you do to improve uh, your communication skills? So become an advocate for yourself. Inform others about your hearing loss. Explain about your device. Talk about what you need, what is helpful for you. Predict what is going to be challenging. Maybe anticipate and make some changes ahead of time. Use assistive listening devices. Really concentrate and focus on the, on the conversation. And if, uh, if you're not sure, even if you are sure, clarify the content. So what do I mean by clarify the content? So all of these uh, suggestions are ways that you can clarify what you hear. And they're a lot more effective than saying, what? What'd you say? Uh, try and use a variety of clarification strategies. So maybe you want to ask for a repetition. Could you say that again, please? Maybe you want to ask for the person to change the way they're saying it. Uh, for example, could you say that a little slower, please? Maybe you, you can ask for it to be rephrased. Could you say that a different way, please? Ask for a simplification. Um, could you make that sentence shorter for me, please? Ask for an elaboration. Oh, could you tell me um, what you mean by catch a flick? You know, there's lots of different modern sayings that we just let pass us. Ask what they mean. Uh, provide a key word. So tell the person what you got so that they know where to begin to clarify their message. So uh, you're talking about going to a movie. Which movie did you say? So those are things for you to do, but also, your communication partner can use these strategies too to check your understanding. So tips for the communication partner. Be aware, beware of the effect of noise and distance. You know, this responsibility to think about listening environment is not solely the responsibility of the technology user. Our human ability to think about how other people think sets us apart from other species. So think about how other people are thinking. If you are here as a communication partner and if you think that your partner is thinking about what a lot of noise in this environment, then help, be an advocate. Uh, what else can you do? You can make sure that you have the attention of the listener first. You can signal the topic or a change in topic. Remember when we were talking about the rainbow passage? I said it's easier for the brain to fill in the words if you know what that topic is going to be. Position yourself with the light on your face. Use clear speech. Remember, slower is better. Louder is not better. Louder distorts sounds. It's much more effective to be slower. Provide pauses. This allows processing time. And practice and use those same clarification strategies. 
I want to talk to you briefly about some helpful resources that you can use uh, to, I know you're all very excited about auditory training now, you're going to go home, do your 20 to 30 minutes a day. So where are you going to get your ideas and activities from? Uh, so Medel has a very long 23 year history of providing rehabilitation support mm -hmm. and this ranges from clinicians like me who uh, do face to face clinical support, clinical education in countries and clinics around the world. Um, uh, to a lot of resources that are available online. So the first one I want to show you is this website. So since 2008, we've had a lot of free downloadable material on the website. This is where you'll find it. You'll see some of those uh, free downloads out on our table. Um, when you're, we've finished here, pop out and have a look. Um, I, I should mention, you do not have to be using Medel technology to use our rehabilitation resources. So uh, Robin mentioned our founder and CEO, Ingeborg Hochmeyer. Uh, she is very strongly committed to supporting rehabilitation and she would be delighted for anybody using hearing technology to use our resources to improve their communication. Uh, the second... Um, uh, place you can find resources is this one. This is our blog. It's been specifically written for candidates considering a cochlear implant and for recipients of cochlear implants. This is where you'll find it, blog.medel.com, but you can just put it in a search engine, blog medel. This is what it looks like. So on the blog for candidates and recipients, you'll see some really great stories. So here there's a story about a guy who is explaining about his journey from hearing aid to cochlear implant. You can get some tips about your technology there. Uh, you can also find in this section here called tips and tricks, you can find some ideas for auditory training activities. So this one here explains about speech tracking. Remember we did that little activity where you had to repeat back about the rainbow from the rainbow pack passage? This explains about that, where that technique came from and how you can do it at home. Uh, the final place that you uh, might be interested in finding some resources is this uh, professionals blog. So this one is written for professionals, but we have lots of recipients and families that like the res resources in here. This is where you'll find it, blog.medel.pro. This is what it looks like inside. So in here, uh, for example, there's an, uh, a webinar, an expert series on single side deafness. So Sue was talking about how people who've got, who are deaf in just one ear and have good hearing in the other ear, they're now eligible for a cochlear implant. But it requires a lot of active auditory training to get that cochlear implant to do its job. Uh, so here we've got an explanation from some experts about what needs to happen. Uh, other things you can find on here, you can watch a surgery if you want. It's fascinating. Maybe you don't want to, but I did. I thought it was great. Uh, prof probably doesn't want to watch a surgery. I think he's probably seen enough of those. Uh, also uh, on here you'll see this, which is probably not an interest for you unless you've got lovely little grandchildren who you want to play some activities with. Uh, these are um, lesson kits that are written for children who are using hearing technology to, to help them, help the therapists working with them uh, help them learn to listen and speak. Uh, but there's lots of activities in there if you just want to play a game with your grandchildren. Uh, this one here, if you're using Medel technology, you already know about this. This is the Medel web shop. This is where you Medel recipients can get all of their um, accessories, bits and pieces. Uh, but also in here, there is a, um, I don't know what to call it, a, doorway uh, into the rehabilitation resources and this is what you would find inside. So these are the resources for adults uh, and you can see some of these out on the table. 
Uh, so do you need to have a MedL device to buy these? You have to have a MedL device to access this web shop, but there are other ways of buying the resources. Some of them are free. Uh, this one you'll see out on the table. This is detailed instructions for 10 auditory training sessions. So there's two giant folders. One is uh, for the recipient who is doing the listening and one is for your communication partner who's going to help you with your auditory training at home. This is called Here at Home. Uh, this is called Here Today. We have examples of the hard copy of this out at the table. It's also available as an app. Uh, and what this does is it, it's a guide through the rehabilitation process and it asks you to consider questions related to 12 common everyday goals. And then depending on your answer, it will guide you towards some practical listening activities. Uh, so there's the hard copy out at the table. There's also a free app version. So the same thing, if you want to download this, you just hold your camera up and it will um, take a picture of this or, and, it, and it will direct you to uh, the app store where you can download here today. I'll just leave you do that. If uh, later I can have my laptop open and you can go back to these slides if you want to. Uh, what else have we got out of the table for you to have a look at? I'm not sure if we have the history, but you can certainly download it online. Uh, from the MEDEL website. So the HISQI stands for Hearing Implant Sound Quality Index. There's 19 questions there that you rate uh, according to um, whether it's a rating scale between 1 and 7. And then it gives you a score out of a total of 133. So you can uh, monitor and gauge the quality of sound that you are getting through your cochlear implant. Uh, the last um, resource that I wanted to show you is Soundscape. So Soundscape is our online resources. At the moment, they are undergoing some modernization, but you can still access them through the American website and you just need to Google Soundscape. The ones I think you'd be interested in are the ones for adults here, and these are sentence matrixes. <clears throat> this is what it looks like when you go into it. So you choose the talker. Do you want to listen, practice listening to a male, a female, or a mixture of both? Do you want to listen to a slow speaker, normal, or maybe really fast speaker? Uh, you can choose the level of background noise, and you can choose the set size. Do you want to listen to 10 sentences or so on? So then you would go in and you see something like this, a matrix. You must make a decision. You will hear a sentence and you need to select the words that you heard. So after the 10 sentences, you get a score. If you get a good score, well, you know to uh, make it more challenging next time. You would choose a faster speaker. You would choose a bigger set size. Uh, on uh, the website that I talked about, there are all of these different uh, rehabilitation downloads. They're all free. I mentioned a few of them to you. This is the hearing implant sound quality. Uh, but you can go in there, you can download all of them if you want. They're all free sitting there. Okay, thank you very much and good <laughs> effort with your auditory training today. Thank you. Um, there's so much valuable information there. That was fantastic. Um, and uh, I, hope, I hope you've got lots of homework plans now. Um, but if you want to revisit the, um, the video, the presentation today, um, you can go to the Cicada website. The link will be there. Click on the link and you'll be able to see the presentation over again so that you can you know, learn all the tips and target what you would like to do specifically. Um, so that was just brilliant. It really was. So I hope um, I hope you all follow up. Um, even people who have had an implant for a long time, I think, can benefit from some more auditory training. I think it probably just helps to sharpen up your skills a bit. But I would really like to thank the whole Medel team for being here today. 
um, with Rebecca, Robin and Andre and Diana. Thanks so much for coming.